what happened? Every first daughter in my family always find it difficult to get married. It happens to all your uncles. Now you are the first daughter. Who told you that the same thing will happen to you? So because you are the first daughter and you are now 25 or 28 or even 30 <laughs> and all the guys that have been coming around, they are the guys with this kind of trousers. They are putting their jeans here. You know those kind of guys? Hey, yo, man, how are you, Alpha? On serious, they sack their trousers. And they come and you say, I'm a, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. And then, so you are not living. And you know, to make the matter worse, the play, uh, all the places you have been going to, the prayer houses, they've been giving you prophecies in that light. Remember in your family, some people are after you, they're after your marital destiny. Hey! So, oh Lord, how are they that have, what? That trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be who say of my soul. There is no hell for me in God. Oh, and you start quoting Psalm 3. You are quoting the scripture not because you have faith, but in fear. And can I tell you this? God is only pleased by faith. So those things you are afraid of were never meant to happen. They happen because you allow them. Hear this. Whatever you fear was not meant to happen. But you granted it permission to happen. Whatever you fear is not meant to happen. But you granted it permission to happen. Every first daughter in my family always find it difficult to get married. It happens to all your uncles. Now you are the first daughter. Who told you that the same thing will happen to you? So because you are the first daughter and you are now 25 or 28 or even 30. <laughs> and all the guys that have been coming around, they are the guys with this kind of trousers. They are putting their jeans here. You know those kind of guys? Hey, yo, man, how are you, Alpha? On serious, they sack their trousers. And they come and you say, I'm a, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian. And then, so you are not living. And you know, to make the matter worse, the play, uh, all the places you have been going to the prayer houses, they've been giving you prophecies in that light. Remember in your family, some people are after you. They are after your marital destiny. Hey! So, oh Lord, how are they that have, what? That trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be who say of my soul. There is no hell for me in God. Oh, and you start quoting Psalm 3. You are quoting the scripture not because you have faith, but in fear. And can I tell you this? God is only pleased by faith. So those things you are afraid of were never meant to happen. They happen because you are not there. Hear this, whatever you fear was not meant to happen, but you granted it permission to happen. Whatever you fear is not meant to happen, but you granted it permission to happen. Every first daughter in my family always find it difficult to get married. It happens to all your uncles. Now you are the first daughter. Who told you that the same thing will happen to you? So because you are the first daughter and you are now 25, or 28 or even 30 <laughs> and all the guys that have been coming around they are the guys with this kind of trousers they are putting their jeans here you know those kind of guys hey, yo man how are you alpha on serious they sack their trousers and they come and you say i'm a i'm a believer i'm a christian and then so you are not living and you know to make the matter worse the play uh, all the places you have been going to the prayer houses they've been giving you prophecies in that light remember in your family some people are after you they're after your marital destiny hey! so oh lord how are they that have, what that trouble me many are they that rise up against me many there be who say of my soul there is no hell for me in god oh and you start quoting psalm 3 you are quoting the scripture not because you have faith but in fear and can i tell you this god is only pleased by faith so those things you are afraid of were never meant to happen they happen because you are not there hear this whatever you fear was not meant to happen 
but you granted it permission to happen whatever you fear is not meant to happen but you granted it permission to happen every first daughter in my family always find it difficult to get married it happens to all your uncles now you are the first daughter who told you that the same thing will happen to you so because you are the first daughter and you are now 25 or 28 or even 30 <laughs> and all the guys that have been coming around they are the guys with this kind of trousers they are putting their jeans here you know those kind of guys hey, yo man how are you alpha on serious they sack their trousers and they come you say i'm a i'm a believer i'm a christian and then so you are not living and you know to make the matter worse the place uh, all the places you have been going to the prayer houses they've been giving you prophecies in that light remember in your family some people are after you they're after your marital destiny hey! so oh lord how are they that have, what that trouble me many are they that rise up against me many there be who say of my soul there is no hell for me in god oh and you start quoting psalm 3 you are quoting the scripture not because you have faith but in fear and can i tell you this god is only pleased by faith so those things you are afraid of were never meant to happen they happen because you allow them hear this whatever you fear was not meant to happen but you granted it permission to happen whatever you fear is not meant to happen but you granted it permission to happen every first daughter in my family always find it difficult to get married it happens to all your uncles now you are the first daughter who told you that the same thing will happen to you so because you are the first daughter and you are now 25 or 28 or even 30 <laughs> and all the guys that have been coming around they are the guys with this kind of trousers they are putting their jeans here you know those kind of guys hey, yo man how are you alpha on serious they sack their trousers and they come you say i'm a i'm a believer i'm a christian and then so you are not living and you know to make the matter worse the place uh, all the places you have been going to the prayer houses they've been giving you prophecies in that light remember in your family some people are after you they're after your marital destiny hey! so oh lord how are they that have, what that trouble me many are they that rise up against me many there be who say of my soul there is no hell for me in god oh and you start quoting psalm 3 you are quoting the scripture not because you have faith but in fear and can i tell you this god is only pleased by faith so those things you are afraid of were never meant to happen they happen because you allow them hear this whatever you fear was not meant to happen but the battle peculiar to your family is a point of the magnitude of the prophetic destiny that that family is carrying when you look around you see all the female children nobody is doing well those who eventually said they married they divorced and whenever god wants to deliver a family he sent a person you see why you cannot afford to fail if you fail the entire family has failed and the liberty of the entire family is dependent on you the freedom of your entire family is dependent on you so instead of saying lord why, why is this battle like this make inquiry what is it that belongs to my family that the devil is so much interested in that is making him to assault everybody like this make inquiry and by the time you see it ah pursue it with the whole of your heart when you lay hold on it then you stand up all right and every member of the family will be set free and then the generation after one eh, we we'll never forget you the battle thank you father thank you adonai we exalt you king of glory i am that i am we worship you only oh we worship you Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before your throne. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God. Oh, wait.
your feet Bow before your throne You are the glorious God Bow before your throne Worship at your feet We bow before your throne You are the glorious God Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we bow before your throne. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, we we bow before your throne we worship at your feet we bow before your throne you are the glory of oh we bow we bow before your throne we worship at your feet we bow before your throne, you are the glorious God, your name is Alpha, Omega, Amen, Jesus, Almighty, Jehovah. You 
Shkata branda kalabradish, lekete branda koska branda labrata kabalita, rete te 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 koska brata tali barata, brakete kete mbroto sapa, makata brondo ske brata kapa. Begin to lift up your voices tonight. Mashete brate kata ba, rekete te 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 kapa kata. Jikata brato koska brata kapete lekete brete kete brata kapalata ratata tata kapakate kete kete rakoto poto saprete kete pa jagada braga da braga da braga lekete broto sipa ika parate se proto nda kili barata akrete pete so proto ko lekete prete kete parata ka lekete branda koso brate lika parata. Lika parata, jakata brakete kete kete kepa, inka parata kiti pa, yeke te 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 pa, rakata branto soprete kepelete, leke ti prate, leke ti prate, mashika tamba, le 
Ekwati Rakata Papa Papa Yeketete Makasha Kata Brake Lakwate Teba Latem Pratika Parata Lekete Berekete Makusopatina Ratatake Yakapa Yakapa Makasopo Lekete Peleketia We've come to receive from the Lord tonight. Let's not be distracted. Focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Mashakata Prake. Makata Pakatu Parata. They look unto him. Hey, Makita Parakata Kata. And they were lightning. Hey, Sakapalata. Yakata. Their faces were lightning. And they were not ashamed. Makunte Parata. Yekete. Yakaparakata. Shakwakata Parata. Lakwakata Pande. Lekoto Parakata Ita. Yakata Parata. Aquata Takatambrate, La Quata Parata, Yakata Katakata Katakata, Yakata Branda, Yakata Branda. Come on, come on, come on. Let your spirit find ventilation tonight. Yakatambato, La Quata Tepa, Yaka Sapa, La Quanda Kateka, Ratata Tatakaba, Aquata Tepa, Yatapa, 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 La Quata Parata, Yakata. Sapa, ma teke teke te, la kuata parata kopera, ma tepe lotu, ai kapata komba, iakata, 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 asha kata branda kapelata, le kuata, le kuata, ma kata parakata, eta komba, iakapo, iakapo, akumba nakata, eta koparata tima, hey, shakata, shakata. Akata barata, iakata ba, iakata ba, latu akate tete, barato topa kaka, asipa, makete proto, lekwati, barati, ba supe kete kete, lekwati te, ba dupe kete ba latu ata, lekete ba, latu akashata, makambrande kete ba, laku akata barata, iakata barata. Ikete, 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 masika lata, iya kaparande koba, mai koparas koba, mai teperete kapa, ila kata makamba ya, iya kapalata, kembra kopa lakamba katiba, iya kopalato, Bible speaking, in the book of Ezekiel, he says, makuparata kaba ya kata, iya kata balakata, as he spake unto me, the spirit it entered into me and set me up on my feet. Makapalata, yakapalatika, yakapalakata, yesopakata banaka, yakata. As soon as Ezekiel stood up, the word of the Lord becomes permanent. I kopalakata, itetela, 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 aparataka, yakopa, yakopa, yakopa. Immediately he stood up. I, Makita, the Lord began to give him instructions. Kempalutu Saikapa, Makapalata. You've come tonight to receive the word of the Lord. You've come to receive direction. You've come to receive instruction. Ela Kumbalata, let your heart be open tonight. Shakaparata. Yakapa, Makasaka Belatea, Rakakakamba, Oh Jesus, Makapaito, Makapaito, Lakaparateka, Yakombata, Makapo Saita Bella, E Caparuteka, E Protocopalata, Masike Pelita, Macumbreteke, Lefreti Coparata, Yakaparata Capanataya, Aquatata, Aquatata, Shaka. Kata para kata bayata, iya kapa rata, aku ata tabande, laku ate, shaka, aku ata para rata, iya kata para kata kata, ate te te, iya mana kumba, ay sabumba, kapumba la kapai, aku akapa pena. 
Oh Jesus, makabarata, shakata balakata yaka. For as the rain cometh down, hey, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth, and board that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. Makita, it shall prosper in the thing which ever I sent it. Hey, Kapalakata. Tonight, the word of the Lord shall prosper in my life. Makita, Lepretia, Lepretia, Akaparakata, Bayakata, Yakaparatama, Yakopa, Akapalakataba, Yakembalaka, Makuparata. Whenever the Lord sent a word. It doesn't go back to him empty. It comes and accomplishes that which the Lord has said. Yes, yes. The Lord has a specific word for you tonight. You just have to open your heart. You have to position your heart tonight to receive that specific word that direction kapele kapa ya kaparataka ya kapalata shakata parakatipa akapa kombere katika liko paratakata ya kata pranda kapa ya kata parakata ya kata pranda I receive my word. I receive my word. I receive my word. The word of the Lord brings liberation. Hey, it transforms. Makata branda kaparakati aba. Yakata parata. Makata pragadakadakadakadakada. Yakaraba. Akobo saita parata. Akaparakapedataya. Makotombrati. Aikapalato akapa. Aikata branda kapalakata mayakata. Eparakata. Manakapa, ya kaparata, a kapa papa papa pia, ya kapa na koperati, a kapa ya kame, I saw, ya kaparata ya ka, a tete tete tapalakata, a kamalakata branda tete, a kaparati mankapa, ya kopeleki mana, I koprakata paka panda, ya kata prakota peka, a kwa kwa kwata, ya kata prata. The word of the Lord gives direction. Ever speaking. It says you will hear a voice behind you saying that is the way. Walk therein. Oh, somebody tonight is receiving a word that will transform you. the Lord. Hey, has the ability to liberate. Makuto parata. Ke supre ke fetilia kasidish in le ke pereti le kwa tuataya ayakata parata kaputu kupa iapapapaka makate prakata ekututupa lakapa. Yes, yes, yes. Akapala katimana katupra katakatwa in lakaka Akupa, 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 La Quata, La Tete Catwata, Yakapa Lakataka, Makata Paracata, the word of the Lord. Hey, 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 has, has the ability to give you strength, to strengthen you, to strengthen you. Pakata Parata. Some of us, we are already tired. 
but the word of the Lord has the ability hey, makutu parata, to set you up on the right track and we push you to keep moving to keep moving to keep moving kaparata kapaliata yakakakapaliata akuparata aika makumbarata kapetya akosai kopa Ila kapana, ila kapana, kapara kata menakata, ya kata palakata, hey, makoso prakata, la kuatata. I shall no longer wander in the dark because the word of the Lord has shined forth in my life. Kapara kata manikapa, yes, nothing is hidden to me anymore because what the word of the Lord, kazina kata kata, has penetrated into my spirit. And dwell it among men. Kapanumba kasaida palatame. A copra katakatakatakata. Yes, we saw his glory. We saw his mightful. We saw his mighty act. Kapalondi kapa. Kapalondi kapa. Kapalondi kapa. Kaparate kapanata. Ilele de katai. A kapondo saina maka. Kaparakata belaka. Kamana mana 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 kapaya. Likapa, Likapa, Likapa. Yes, yes. Makapa Lakata. The world brings illumination. Kapa Nikapa. Lakivila Sita. Kapa Rondika. Kapa Rondika. Kapa Rakata Kata Kapa Papo. Akaka Kaka Kaka Papo. Kapa Rakate Pelata. Makapronda Kapayata. Yes, Kakada. Likapa, Likapa, Likapa. Makabo sheke mate, kaprondo kopos kapalia, kaparakata pande kaparia, kapakata pelakira, ilakada ba i sevena, akrapakonda baliaka, lakata barakata. Hey, yes, 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 yes. As the word of the Lord comes tonight, my faith is strengthened. Kapani kapalia, my faith is strengthened. Kapala kopande kapa, azif. Vela kata branda kapaliata, kaparate kamana kapalia, ila kapayato, kapani veliaka, saka parata, kapombo dogogogoto, ya kapalita, ate te 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 te, ya kapa, akwata peli sapa, makwata tata kaparata, kaparata kapeka. Reshaga da balaga deska, reshko tushke rehatoska. Kila baraga da sote ya kadeshka, kila baraga toske tishka da balaboska, ikonde lebregoski fratoske hedeski rahatosa, inda kiske fratoske hida balegos konde rige dosha, inda gara bragos kodi ya da boske hinda la badishka, inda kise pita pila bagazoko tishe de belebadoza, irako sende lebrega de 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 desha. In the course, it in the course, it is for the Zakira. In the case, it for those kinda labadish de 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 dosa. E kalibra dosinda ligo shinda rabalaze kira prosite shega de 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 dosa. I kanda labara badaga. Ancient word, ever true. Changing me and changing you. You have come with open heart. All of the ancient world in power. Ancient world ever true. Changing me. And changing you, we have come with open heart. Oh, let the ancient world in power. 
Father, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. We exalt your name. Thank you for your word, your word of life, your word of transformation. Thank you for another time of fellowship in your presence. Lord, we ask that even as we gather tonight, this evening, was that your word will come expressly in the name of Jesus. Speak through us. Let every life be transformed in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that in this house tonight, the believer will be edified, the devil will be terrified, and Jesus will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate Jesus? Amen. As we have our sins, can we celebrate Pastor? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Faith recalibration. You know, for the past few few Tuesdays, we've been talking about faith recalibration. You know, after salvation, one of the major duties of the believer is renewing of your mind. One of the most important duty, one of the most important things you will do as a believer is renewing your mind. Romans 12 verse 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Shut up, Ayakos. Thank you, Jesus. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me um, put it to us that if you are not your, your, your mind is not being renewed by the word then you are conforming to the world it's either your mind is being transformed by the word or you are conforming to the world there is no gray area there is no in between you are either being transformed by the word of God or conforming to the world I know I've heard people say, ah, I like this particular preacher. He's trending. He teaches me. He knows how to, from him, I, he teaches me the word and teaches me the world. That is rubbish. You are either teaching the word or you are, or you are not teaching the word. There is nothing like somebody, a message is making sense to the world. A message of the gospel cannot make sense to the world. Hallelujah. So in the past few Tuesdays we've been recalibrating our mind to think faith, to align with faith, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. All right, so there are two vitals or two cores of salvation on the Christian faith. You have grace and you have faith. Now, we have people who decide to choose one extreme and stick to it and overflog particular extreme. But the truth is, the two of them combine to give you salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Ephesians 2 verse 8. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself, it is the gift of God. You see that you are saved by grace through faith. Now what is grace? What is faith? Grace represents everything that Jesus achieved for you by his death, burial, and resurrection. Everything that has become your right based on what Jesus did. So, um, salvation came by grace. You receive it by faith. So, when, this, when Apostle Peter said that every single thing that you need for life and godliness has been made available to you. He's talking about the grace of God made available to you. Every single thing you will need in life is available through grace. Now, the fact that it's available to you doesn't mean that you will enjoy it. In other words, the, the whole world has been saved. Salvation is available for the whole world, right? But is the whole world saved? Because grace alone is not enough to save you. Even though Jesus has paid it all. It is not enough to save you. There is something you need to do to access that grace, which 
has made available for you. So in other words, salvation is available for you as a Christian or as anyone, human beings. But you need to apply faith to what grace has made available before it becomes real in your life. You see, prosperity has been, every believer, it is the desire of God that we prosper. Prosperity is part of your package. The Bible talks about the things that accompany salvation. Prosperity is one of it. But you could be in church and be broke, right? Because the fact that grace has made it available you doesn't mean it automatically shows in your life. Healing is the children's breath. In fact, divine health is what God has made available for us. But we still have people in the church who are sick, who are sickly. According to apostles, some people are still sickly amongst you. People who the devil still oppress, even though Jesus has defeated every principality and made an open show of them and has given us the victory. Hallelujah. So in other words, grace can make something available for you and you will still be lacking in that area. Now, somebody asked me, if Jesus has paid it all, why do I need to do something to access it? Now, let's have this scenario. You have maybe a billionaire in dollars, right? He has run his business and he has a child. He willed his whole inheritance to the child. And maybe the child is 10 years old. And he puts a caveat in the will. He says, until this child is 18 years old, you can't give him this inheritance. Why didn't that child get the inheritance immediately? After all, it's already his. There is a condition he needs to fulfill before he accesses that inheritance. Why? Because the man wants to see hand over the business to somebody who is responsible. So faith is responsibility. God has made everything available for you. But you have to show your own part of responsibility to enjoy what Jesus has made available. So it's not that, okay, eh, by grace. You know people who claim grace, who preach hyper grace, they are not completely wrong. But they are preaching half truth, right? Because grace alone cannot save you. And people who preach only faith works. Because if you're not careful, when you start preaching faith, you tend to work. Because you now focus on your own ability, on what you are doing. Neglecting what Jesus has done. Now, those two, when you overflow one extreme, you walk in error. But you find a balance between grace and faith. So, I like to tell us that whatever grace has not made available, you cannot claim by faith. Hallelujah. Whatever grace has not made available, you cannot claim by faith. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Romans 4, 16. It says, Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. It is faith that it might be by grace. In other words, if it's not of faith, then it's not of grace. If you don't need your faith to receive it, then grace did not provide it. If you need your faith to access it, then grace has provided it. So the only thing you... You, can, you are permitted to exercise your faith in receiving is what grace has made available for you. So it is of faith that it might be by grace. So grace, whatever grace has made available for you as a believer, you can claim by faith. In other words, if you can see it in the scriptures that it is yours by what Jesus did, you can claim it by faith. So you see that in the past few weeks, we talked about how faith, the faith we're talking about is not even your faith. So you see that God did everything. He gave everything to you by grace. And he still gave you his faith to access that which he has done for you. So he gave you food. And he still gave you his spoon to eat it. So it is now left for you to just act. You know, no matter what you do by faith, no matter how much effort you put in by faith, it is still in um, like, it is still inconsequential compared to what Jesus did by grace. So if you weigh what you do by faith to access what is done by grace, they are not comparable. Salvation, what you do to receive salvation is that you believed and you confessed. It's not comparable to what Jesus did, what he had to go through on the cross and spent three days and went to hell to give you salvation, to obtain that which was lost. Because the scripture says that the Son of Man came for that which was lost. So, salvation is by grace, but you receive it by faith. Now, what is faith? What is faith? 
Hebrews 11 verse 1. Hebrews 11 verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Now, let me give us this scenario. You, you did not have money, right, initially. And somebody calls you and says, the Lord spoke to me to give you some money. And the person gives you a check, right? Have you seen the money? But do you have the money? Yeah, that is faith. Faith is the proof that what is not seen is already yours. The proof you have that gives you assurance that that thing which you are believing God for is already yours. That is faith. So it is the substance of things you are hope you've been hoping for. In other words, hope does not give you that thing if it does not grow to faith. Faith and hope, they are two different things. I think that's been explained to us. If you hope for it alone and you didn't grow to faith, it is nothing. Now, what is faith? Say faith is the substance. What is substance? That substance, the word substance there is hypostasis in the Greek. I think I, I sent something to you. Hypostasis in Greek. Now, what is hypostasis? Hypostasis means... Hallelujah. Can we display what I sent to you? It means a spot, a substance, a confident boasting, right? Now, the moment they give you that check, you have not received the money. But if you were owing somebody before, like the person comes to you, you have this assurance, you're not jittery anymore. Imagine your rent is one million naira and somebody gives you a check of 100 million naira. If your landlord comes to your door, you are, you knock, oh God, I beg, I'm coming, don't disturb me. Like, there is this assurance, this confidence you have. The same you that was hiding in your room when he knocks on the door, like, now he's knocking. He was hearing music before, that you're playing music. When you heard the knock, you know it's the landlord, you kept quiet, like, you are not in the house, he knocks so. Now, the moment you receive a check, you don't have the money yet, your disposition changes. That is what faith does. Now, it says hypostasis. You see, it means something that is under, which means something that under where your hope stands on, your confidence stands on. That is faith. Right? You see, it is standing under a guaranteed agreement. A guaranteed agreement, a title deed. Now, title to a promise or property. So you see that, now they say title deed. What is title deed? Title deed is a document that you receive to a house or to a property. Now, you don't have to have seen that house. The moment you have that title deed, the house is yours. Which means, the moment you have faith for something, that thing you are believing God for, is already yours. The moment you have faith for healing, your body might still be telling you something else, but the healing is already yours. The moment you have faith for prosperity, you may still be drinking Gary. That prosperity is already yours because you have faith for it. And faith will produce it. It says a legitimate claim. Not just a claim. A legitimate claim. That's a hypostasis. That is what faith is. So which means faith is your legitimate claim to all that Jesus has done for you. So somebody comes here now, inside here, and says... This hall is mine. You don't take his word for it. He has to produce a proper a, a document to show that this is his, right? So, if for example somebody is living in an in an apartment and the landlord decides to sell the house without telling the tenant, if the new owner comes and he presents the document, you can shout from now to tomorrow he's the owner of the house because he has a proof. That is what your faith is. Now, can we have this scripture that? Hebrews 11.1 1, in the Amplified Version. In the Amplified Version. It says, now faith is the assurance. It is the title deed. The confirmation of things hoped for. Divinely guaranteed. Now the things that are divinely guaranteed, the confidence you have that that thing is yours, is your faith. It says, and it is the evidence of things that you have not seen. It is the conviction of of, the re of that reality. Now look at it. This line says, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Hallelujah. So which means you don't need to confirm it in your physical sense for faith to work. 
Faith works inconsequential, irrespective of your physical senses. Faith is a spiritual assurance that you have. So you might be having a different feeling in your body, but if faith says it is yes, then it is yes for you. So you see, it is it's a faith comprehends as fact that which cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So in other words, it is your physical senses cannot see it. Your eyes cannot see it yet. You keep seeing, we keep shouting about it and splendor as our theme for the year. You cannot see it yet. But your faith, you just know that this year is going to be different. I already have it. I may not have seen it yet. See, your senses can, are limited, but faith is not limited. Hallelujah. Faith is not limited, but your, fence, your senses are limited. So as a child of God, if you keep comprehending or keep measuring or keep kind, trying to understand what the Lord has told you by your senses, you will go astray. Because the scripture says in Hebrew, in Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 3, it says that the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. He said, and he shall not judge by the seeing of the eyes or the hearing of the ear. It's already done. That is faith. Faith is, is you knowing beyond every reasonable doubt that that which Jesus has done for you is already yours. That the victory which the Lord has spoken to you is already yours. That the prophetic word that has been released to you is already yours. The faith is what spurs you into action. Faith is responsibility because you know who has said it. You know his word is truth and you know his word is life. So it spurs you into action with so much confidence. Just imagine the president gives you a letter and say, go and meet this minister. The president gives you a letter. The minister is high up there, but the president is higher. Now, faith is like the note from the president to you. And the minister is like that person that is like wherever where your blessing lies. You go there with that confidence because you know who has said it. The minister, he has no choice. The minister, yeah, that which has, was said to you in your secret place becomes a reality. So, it is the note you receive. You know, it's like the senator giving you a note. <laughs> You're looking for admission for years, and he just met, met the senator. He said, okay, I know the VC. Go and meet him. And you go there, oh, the security man is trying to say, you can't see the VC. Said, I know, the VC is ex expecting me. Senate, the Senate president gave me a note for him. Now, the moment you show to the security, he becomes somebody who was shouting at you before, starts to call you sir. Why? Because that which you show him has changed your identity. You see that faith changed your identity at, at the new birth. The moment you applied your faith to that which Jesus did for you, you became an entirely new person. You that was a sinner, drenched in sin, dead in sin, according to the scriptures, you became alive in Christ and you became like Christ. In fact, you became Christ himself because he, became, he came to dwell on your inside. That is what faith does for you. So in other words, the grace is already there. The moment you receive that note, you became... You, enter into faith, you apply faith to that which was done for you by Jesus, your identity switches immediately. So, the person who was broke before, by one note, becomes a rich person. The person who was oppressed of the devil, who in their family lineage, they, they struggle, they die at 40, the person finds something that just up his faith and he becomes an overcomer. Faith changes its identity immediately. So, faith works like magic. It is not magic. Eh? Because it's a process. But when you have it, faith, it, see, it, may not have, it may not happen immediately, but your disposition changes in the spirit. The reason why it doesn't happen immediately is not because God has not done it immediately. It's because maybe there are things that need to be put in place for you to see the reality. But the moment it happens, your identity changes. In the spirit, devil knows it, the um, hell knows it, and everybody, they know that there is a, this is a new person, a new identity. So, you, you are still, that family strong man will only thrive on your ignorance. But as he's coming, he knows that this person is a changed person because the person dared applied faith to the salvation message. So, his identity has changed. Now, the day you see in the word of God that this devil, you are over him, and you apply your faith in that direction, that same family strong man that has been oppressing people for generations checks out of your life. 
Because faith changes your identity. Hallelujah. Amen. So, now, you see, I talked about the man, the rich man, who willed his property to his son. Do you know that if the son does not meet the condition that the father sets, the property is still his, but he never enjoys it. Hallelujah. That is the danger of not applying faith or not understanding faith. You see, as you are being recalibrated, it's not coming to you as a knowledge or just to increase your wisdom. It's coming as an impartation to empower you because as the word, as he spoke the word into me, the word entered into me. The spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. In other words, it empowered me to go and do that word which was said to me. So, you have been hearing about faith recalibration. You have been re when you say recalibration, your mindset is being switched. Now, some people's mindset about faith before um, three Tuesdays ago has been switched. But the thing is, faith is, the power of faith is in its application. Hallelujah. The power of faith is in its application. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 14 to 21. Matthew 17, 14 to 21. It says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son for his, for his lunatic and so vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the, into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Next verse. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And in verse 18, Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? Then he said, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, he said, Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, and he now says, if you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, a mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds. Why did Jesus use mustard seed as an example? Now, did Jesus say that faith is like mustard seed? Or did Jesus say that faith is small like mustard seed? He's telling you that you see as small as a mustard seed is, if you engage it, if your faith is as small as that and you engage it, that faith has the capacity to grow, to become a big tree. Because when you sow a small mustard seed, it is small. In fact, it is, if it falls on the ground, you might not see it. If you dare plant that mustard seed, that same mustard seed that was inconsequential, that was so small, that was so microscopic, grows to become a very big tree that even birds can come to perch in. So Jesus is saying that if you dare apply your faith to a situation, this thing that looks immovable, this mountain that looks like it cannot be moved, will move and go to the sea if you dare engage your faith. In other words, if you dare apply faith to that word that I say to you, if you dare apply faith to what Jesus has done for you, every impossibility becomes possible. That was, that's why he says, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Why? Because you engage your faith. Nothing will not be impossible to you because Jesus said it. It will be impossible to you because you engage your faith. Hallelujah. So you see, that your father still left the properties for you. They are still your own. And you refuse to meet the conditions. Maybe he told you that you must be married before you have access to this. As long as you remain unmarried, you do not have access to that property. As long as you do not meet the conditions that are required to enjoy that property or those things, you remain st static. And even though you have billions in the account, you will be drinking Gary. Aduru me here. Hallelujah. So, faith is what grants you access to your inheritance. It's already yours. If you don't take it, nobody else will take it. So, but if you don't apply faith to that which is yours, 
then it will, it will keep being yours. You know that the physical exists to, exp to explain this, the spiritual. It's what we call the potential and kinetic, right? Potential energy, as long as nothing is done to move it from potential to kinetic, it remains potential. In other words, that car outside has the ability to take you to a place in 10 minutes where it would have taken you one hour on foot, right? Now, if you keep allowing that car in that place and you don't engage it, you will never experience the fullness of that car. So you have potential to do something. It is still potential. It will not profit you. Potentials do not profit anybody, nothing. If it does not move to kinetic, it remains potential. And that is why God's servant, late um, Mice Moreau, says the grave is the most talented, is the most rich place on earth. Why? Because there are potentials that never came to reality. You see that in the things of God, there is the legal side, which is what Jesus has done for you. Legally, you are not broke. Like the angels are looking at you and they're like, ah, why is he trekking? He has a private jet. He has Lamborghini. He has stack of car. He's, how, why is he living in one room apartment? Face me, I face you. Pit toilet. When he has, he has mansions to his name. Those are legal sides. Vitally, if you don't apply faith to what Jesus has made available for you legally, it remains on the legal side. Is it God's fault? No. It is your fault. Hallelujah. So everything that we ever need in Christ has been made available in Jesus. And for God, everything that all his promises are yes and yes and yes and yes. It says in Christ, all, our, all his promises are yes and amen. And amen is yes. So which means whatever God has said concerning you, he's just yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. So faith is what translates. So in other words, you have the faith of Christ. You have the title deed. You have the document which grants you access to enjoying what God has made available for you. But it's enough to align with what God has made for you, available for you, to know that this book is on your, on your end. It's on your table. It's no longer with God, right? It's like table tennis. The egg is with you. If you don't play it to God, you don't receive serve back. Now, if you don't serve the egg to the re receiver, he cannot play it back to you. The egg is still with you. In other words, you don't apply faith to what God has made available for you. You cannot enjoy the benefits therein. Hallelujah. So you see why it is dangerous to operate without faith or to have a lack of understanding of what the faith of God is. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Which means, without faith, anything you do is sin. If you pray outside of faith, it is sin. If you give outside of faith, it is sin. Right? For without faith, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? For he that cometh to God must first of all believe that he exists. That he is, that he exists. And that he is a rewarder. See, your faith starts from your knowledge. What you don't have a knowledge of, you cannot apply faith to. That is how faith starts. Now, you don't know that your dad left billions for you in his will. How can you go and claim it? You don't know that your father owns the cattle upon a thousand hills, or the father has given everything to you. How do you claim it? It starts with the right knowledge. That is why the scripture says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith does not come by prayer. Hmm? Even though you build your faith in prayer, but it does not first of all come by prayer. It does not first of all come by being active in church. It comes by hearing. So I dare tell you that faith comes by hearing, faith comes by studying, faith comes by paying attention to the word, by digging deep into the word, by realizing what Jesus has done for you. Now, that is how faith comes. So in other words, first of all, you must know that God exists and that God is a rewarder. If you don't know that God is a rewarder, then you will just come and you will serve and serve and serve and serve and go. And you will now blame God. You see why people blame God for, faith, for their failures? Let me tell you, there's a difference between faith and faithfulness. Hallelujah. Faith and faithfulness, they are two different things. 
Faithfulness means I am committed. Right? They say, come to church, I'm always in church. They say, um, come for meetings, I'm always in meetings. They say, um, fast, I fast. They say, come for prayer meetings, I do prayer meetings. They say, um, go for visitation, I go for visitation. Come for evangelism, I come for evangelism. That's faithfulness. You are faithful to the call. But you can be faithful and not be in faith. Hallelujah. You can be faithful and not be in faith. But you cannot have faith and not be faithful. Faith even actually empowers your faithfulness. You cannot be in faith. Because faith, the one you have faith in is the word of God. So the word of God empowers you to do the right thing. It empowers you to be faithful. But you can be faithful because maybe you are taught to be faithful. You were brought up in a good home. You were brought up to be committed. You know, there is no understanding there. But faith can, must be targeted to something. Faith is not vague. Hallelujah. So in other words, you are faithful, but there's no faith. So somebody say, I know somebody who served in, God, in, in church for years, and the person died of sickness. And the person was faithful, but you can't say the person was in faith. Hallelujah. But if you are in faith, you are going to be faithful. Faith empowers you to be faithful. Hallelujah. Now, how does faith work? How do you apply faith to any situation? How do you apply faith? Number one, find out what God has said concerning that situation. You must, first of all, find out what God has said concerning that situation. That is the first step in engaging faith. I'm not going to talk plenty about... See, the word of God has the answers to everything. We have heard, heard here once and again how that you have issues with finances. That is not the time to go and start studying about um, healing. Go to scriptures, get scriptures on healing and what the, has the Lord said about my finances? And, and, and see, when you find that word, then you engage. I think it was last month we talked about how to um, overcome the crisis. That the first thing you do is not to start speaking. It's that you engage the spirit. Right? Now as you are studying the word, the Holy Spirit is revealing things to you. Now the two things that the word does to you is that faith comes as you study the word, and the, fr from the word, you are empowered to carry out what you need to carry out. So, find out what the word has said concerning that situation. That is how, number one thing, if you are going to, if you are sick, it's not the time to go and start talking about things that don't concern you. Go for scriptures on healing, right? And consume those scriptures on healing until faith rises in your heart. Hallelujah. You engage the scripture as it concerns healing. So, first thing you do is that you find out what has God said concerning the situation. Because if you are broke, nobody is broke here in Jesus' name. If you are broke or if somebody is broke and they have this mindset that God does not want them to be rich, you, you are going to be poor. You have to find out what has the word said concerning prosperity. Does God really want me to be, poor, to, to be rich or poor? Now, when you find out that actually God had in his mind for me is that I might be rich. In fact, that I, I, I am rich. I already have everything for me. That he became poor, even for my sake, that I might enjoy his, rich, his, his prosperity, that I might be rich. He said, for my sake, he put away his prosperity, his wealth, and everything, and he became poor. Just that, through his poverty, I might be rich. Now, if your mindset is that being poor is a way so that you don't miss heaven, right? You can say that, I want to be heavenly conscious. So that, and um, because the scripture says that it is difficult for a camel, then for a well, camel, camel to, um, donkey to, to go through the camel door, whatever, and then um, for a, a rich man to enter heaven. I don't know what that scripture is telling you. Trust me, if you have millions, you will lose them. Because prosperity starts from your spirit first. So you have to find out what did the word say concerning this thing. Now, if you, if you are sick or the devil is afflicting somebody around you with sickness, what did God say about sickness? Because some people believe that God, eh, well, sickness is God's way of teaching me. Maybe you now remember, the devil will not remind you, reminding you of things that you did before. Ah, okay, oh, ah, it's because I did this thing. Oh, it just, anyway, yeah, maybe just back up. Let's just accept it. Eh? After all, God is, if I die now, I'll go to heaven. You know, you will start consoling yourself with stupid ideologies. Hallelujah. 
find out what the what has the word said concerning this thing. The first thing to do. Now, having found out what the word says, believe it. Now you have to believe that this word is the word from God. If you don't believe that this word is the word from God, you have no business being a Christian. You believe it. In fact, with your whole life. You know one thing that happens when you start studying these things and you start getting light. Something will happen around you that will want to make shift your belief from what you are seeing in the world. That's why I said you cannot view the things of God based on your senses. Your senses are not accurate. Your senses have fault. Hmm? Your, the word of God is the perfect word. So it, the scripture says that we do not live by sight, but we live by faith. In other words, which means you are either living by faith or you are living by sight. If the scripture says, but we do not live by faith, by sight, but by faith, which means you either live by sight or by faith, which means it's comparing both of them. You compare things that are equal and opposite, if I want to use that. Now, you either live by sight, by what you see. Now, that sight there talks about your senses. You just use sight to, to generalize it. Talk about you either live by what you see, what you feel, and what you hear. You either live by the dollar rate or by the um, pound rate, by, by um, the fuel price, or you live by faith. Hallelujah. People packed their cars since last year that they increased fuel. In that season, people have bought cars, not one car cars, and they are still using them. People have bought SUVs that used to drink fuel, and they are still using it every single day. So it is what you see that determines what becomes your lot. Do you see from the world with the eyes of faith, or you see with the eyes of your senses? So you have to believe what you see from the world, like your life depends on it, because actually your life depends on it. So you believe what you see, what you see from the word of God. Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, it says, you believe with your heart. When you say believe, see, you might be reading it, and the first time you got it, say, hey, don't jump from it. Stay there, because you have not believed yet. When you believe, you know. Eh? In fact, you don't use another person's belief to validate your belief. You get it. The preaching you receive is to spoil you into digging deep and getting it for yourself. Somebody's belief cannot make you stand, though. Your own belief, because when adversaries come, for example, if you are alone at night, an attack comes. Before you pick your phone to call pastor or to call the prophet, things might have happened already. So if you don't have the faith by yourself to stand, so you believe for yourself, right? It's like, you know, with people, prophetic pushes and um, anointings and all those things, they are important. We can't discard the impartations. Now, but what they do, in fact, how God paints it for me, what they do most times is that they push you to start so that you sustain things on your own. It's like a car that has issues. It has spoiled, right? The battery has issues. Prophetic push is like when they push that car and they release, the, like this manual car, they release leg for it, right? It starts working. It cannot start on its own. It has been pushed. Now, if that battery was not charged, if you don't go and sort out that battery so that it can start on its own, you will, your, the car will stop somewhere in one bush where there's nobody to push the car for you. What do you do then? So that's why as much as prophetic pushes, impartations, and having hands laid on you are important, what you don't know for yourself, you will suffer for it. Bishop Boedipo says that what you don't know, you will pay for. Hallelujah. So when you see it from the world, you believe it with your whole heart. And what do you do? You confess. We've read this scripture before. 2 Corinthians 4.13. You confess. See, faith is never quiet. Faith is never quiet. See, what happened with Peter? Peter denied Jesus three times, right? And when Jesus approached him, when he went to fish, what did Jesus do? Jesus made him confess that he loved him three times. Jesus ensured that he said it with his mouth. What you do not see over your life cannot become a reality over your life. See, nobody ever gets a result in this kingdom by being lackadaisical or by not being intentional about what they do. Like I said, faith is responsibility. Hmm? So, you see, said um, Romans, um, 2 Corinthians 4.13. It says, 
it's talked about, it says, we having the same spirit of faith. Yeah, we've learned it before. Now, this spirit of faith is not talking about the Holy Spirit of faith. Though. It's talking about the attitude of faith, the disposition of faith, the character of faith. We have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed, therefore have I spoken. Right? We also believe, therefore we speak. Now, who did he say it is written? You know, um, I think it was the first the first the first um first message in this series talked about the faith of the old testament right the faith of the old testament was based on their performances and their faithfulness now the faith in the new testament according to galatians 2:20 leave this one here is based on the faith of god faith of christ that he gave you now in i think paul talked about and he says talked about from faith to faith talking about the different faith dispensation the one in the Old Testament to the one in the New Testament. And he says that it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. Now, in other words, even in the Old Testament, they were still speaking in line with their faith. What did David do when Goliath spoke against him? Goliath said one word. David said how many? Six or so. Because even though Goliath was holding his sword, he was still cursing David with his words. The Bible says that he was cursing David with his gods. Why was he cursing David? David was a small 17-year-old boy. Why didn't Goliath, who was a giant from his youth, just approach David to kill him? But he knows that spiritual battles are battles of words. So he spoke words to David. And what made David lose? David ah, had understanding. Thank God for him, for the revelation. He responded to him straight and said, I will make mess of you because you are abusing the God of Israel. Now, for how many days? For 40 days, Goliath kept on speaking against the people that were in the battlefield, Saul and the rest. And nobody had the understanding to speak back. David won because he spoke. So the words he already spoke empowered the stone that he, he, he threw, which may ensure that the stone targeted the only open place in Goliath's body. So he won by speaking. He didn't win because he knew how to swing. Because that perfection was too much. That it's the only place that was open in his forehead the thing entered. It is the words that he spoke. He says, therefore have I spoken. So we also believe and therefore speaks, which means what validates your belief is with the words you say. You can't say that you believe that things are going to get better and when you enter a vehicle, because when you enter a vehicle right now, the first now, ah, Nigeria, now, wow, it is well, things are just, and you two, you join and you give statistics about how things are bad and you give history about how when 99 Things keep getting worse and worse and worse. And you now get back to church and believe that things will get better for you. No, it will not. Because you have rubbished your belief by what you said. What validates your belief is what you say. You can't be praying like a king and be talking like a pauper. So, your belief is validated by what you speak. You say it to, to be in line with your belief. If you are saying something, in fact, at times we confuse the Holy Spirit. Because we read in the word, we come to church, they make you declare bounty and splendor and big in millions, and you really you go outside, just outside this Primos Plaza here, outside this gate here. You go there and something happens and say, man, it is well. Look. Hi. Hi, this country, eh? Hi. Yeah, this country hard. Kai. Kai. Now to Japan na in now. You see, you can Japan, that is your destination. That's where God wants you to be. But don't forget. That um, is, um, a, a particular person, Japan from Israel, to Moab, what's his name again? Mm -hmm. And he left, went and lost everything. Came back, the um, Naomi, this is Naomi, Naomi came back with his, um, his step, um, an in law, a daughter in law that was spiritual. If not, she would have come back empty. And indeed, that name that she talked about, Ms. Mara, would have been her name indeed. Because they japad. People wanted to japa. They were all japaing when um, Isaac was there. And God said, Oga, stay in Nigeria. Stay in. Do you know that it is easier to be where God wants you to be? No matter how it looks now. Because that's where the provision is. If God wants you to be in Nigeria and you are in Sri Lanka, Provision will not live here to come and meet you there. 
So stop seeing things are hard like every other person. The scripture says that when there is a casting down, you shall say. Now, that scripture actually says that there is a casting down. Like in the env natural environment, there is a he say, didn't say that when pussy, there's a casting down. He said when there is a casting down. In other words, the way it is in Nigeria now, that's the way it was in that time. But what you are seeing, you know, you dare not say it, what you are seeing. You see what the spirit is saying. What you want to see from the realities of the spirit, what you have seen from the world is what you speak. So you don't say, you enter a vehicle, uh, when I enter a vehicle and they start speaking, I just put my earpiece in my ear. Because I, I can't hear some things. It, it doesn't matter whether I have five naira in your account or ten naira. What you say becomes your lot. See, where you are in life right now is a function of what you have said before. And where you will be tomorrow is what will be determined by what you are saying today. So if you believed, then let your confession show it. Let your confession show it. So if, for example, you just wake up, when, when you are tempted to say rubbish, tell yourself, just say, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Use, be, learn to, to thank Jesus when things are bad or they look bad. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Just appreciate God. That period, when you do that, before you know it, what looks so difficult becomes normal. Like, it's nothing before you. You know when the scripture says that, who are that old mountain before the Zerubbabel, you shall become plain. It's not saying that the mountain be will become plain. No. It's saying that Zerubbabel will, will grow so high that that mountain, what was mountain to others, will look plain to him. He said, before you, it shall be plain. Not before the whole world, right? So, Zerubbabel grew to that point, whereby what was a mountain, what was an obstacle, became plain. You know, the same thing that was an obstacle to people becomes your own stepping stone. Hallelujah. Praise God. And finally, in the steps, to how to apply to a situation, you act. Act. Because the truth is this. Faith is not vague. As you are engaging your faith, engaging the word of God, as you are um, trying to confess, the Holy Spirit will lay words in your in instructions in your heart. You know, I talked about the rich man whose property was willed. You know, in those situations, there are executors, right? The executor is the one who tells you what to do, how to attain this inheritance. In this case, the Holy Spirit is our executor on how to access the will, the inheritance we have in Christ. So, you act on the instruction. If you don't act, your faith can be dead. So, in other words, you, ha you study from the word, you believe, yes, God can do this, God has done this for me, and you confess, and while confessing, an instruction is laid in your heart, right? Maybe the instruction is just to call this person. And the person you are meant to call, you have issues with the person. So, but the pride in you, right? Pride of life. You say, I beg, I'm bigger than him. And unknown to you, God has laid your matter in that person's heart. That your calling that person will activate it. It's like when God told pastor to call that woman from school. He was looking for school fees. He would have said, I beg, I need somebody that can give me money. Not somebody I've been calling for years. That's not, that's not answering me. So, the obedience to that instruction didn't just give him school fees, but jara money. Hallelujah. So, you act on the word. The instruction might be, go and sow the seed. The instruction might be, take some days of fast. The instruction might be, wake up at midnight and dance for 30 minutes for the next seven days. Instruction is, will be peculiar to you. you. You might need money and God is telling you to go and do something that doesn't have to do with money. You, you don't say that um, this is how this person got his result. That this is how I must get my result. God can inspire you to do what that person did. But it doesn't mean that it's a template. You have, you have your personalized instruction that will lead you to your result. You must act based on the instruction. If you don't act, then you can't enjoy the fullness of what is meant for you. Hallelujah. James 2 verse 14. James 2, 14 to 26. We'll round up here. It says, What does it profit, my brethren, do a man say he has faith and have not work? Can faith save him? We'll stay there. What he's saying is that the man has faith and have not works. You know, it seems contradictory because Paul said, we are not saved by works, but by faith. What James is saying there is saying that the person has faith, but does not have corresponding work. 
corresponding action. That is what he's saying. The works there means corresponding action. That's why Paul says, work out your faith. It's a corresponding action. Your faith must produce a corresponding action. Hallelujah. Next verse, please. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and any one of and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Yeah, they say we should confess. So I'm confessing over your life. Be filled. He said, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. In other words, the person for the person to come meet you, the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you, help the person. Help the person. But you say, mm -mm. the person go in peace. You pray for the person. Now, for example, the Holy Spirit might tell you, go and give this person one million naira. The person is going through an issue. But you call that person. You say, um, I, I want to be praying with you every midnight for 30 minutes. And this, this, this. The person will appreciate it. Now, the person doesn't know that the instruction is for you to give them money. So have you done what God says you should do? No. James is saying it doesn't profit anything. If you do, even though what you are doing is good works, but the good works you are doing is out of instruction outside of instruction, then there is no profit. What, what will attract profit is what you do in instruction. It says the next verse. It says, even so, if it had faith, if it had faith, no, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. That is faith. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. Next verse says, yeah, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works. And I will show you my, my faith by my works. So you see that it's not talking about the works that you do, works of the law. He's saying my faith by what I do. In other words, what you do is what betrays your faith. Next verse. Thou believest that there is one God. You do well. Even the devils believe. They don't just believe. They believe and they tremble. You, you believe you can still enter this church and pick your call during service. The devil believes so much that if they were in this service, they would not pick their call. Hallelujah. But will you know, O oh vain man, that faith without works is dead? He said works. In other words, corresponding actions. It might be more than one action. God can say, go and do this. And you've done it. And it leads you to another instruction. And some way, somehow, it may not make sense to you until you've gotten to the end of that instruction. Everything that seems stupid to you becomes real. You go, okay, it starts to make sense to you. Now, I understand why I had to wait so, so years before I got to school. Now, I, I understand why I had to do this, I had to do that. I am just following by instruction. You see, when people do not follow instruction, they are the ones who hastily go and jump out of faith. You know, the Bible says that he that believes does not make haste. If you are in faith, in other words, if you are following instruction, you follow that instruction with every commitment. You are not in a haste to go and jump steps. Because if you jump steps, you will come back to that step. If you jump up, if I jump up now, I will come down to my level. But if I grew up, when I was here, if I jumped up to here, I went back to my level. But now I have grown up to this level. I cannot go down there because I have grown up. So instructions help you to grow. And you grow to a point whereby you know for a sure, you know how somebody can say, stand up, be healed. Like God's servant, one of God's generals, that I watched this clip the other day that was telling people were lying on, on the stretchers, just say, up, up, up. Now, there was a time when God, the first time he started, when God said, pray for this person, lay hands on him. If he rejected that instruction, there is no way you grow to where he is, right? The inheritance you have that you can only attain as the son of the richest man on the earth. When you get to 18, if you refuse to grow to 18, you will not get that, that, that inheritance. So you see, the works that you do, they align you with entering your inheritance and going into the fullness of everything that God has done for you. So your faith, having heard from the word what God said concerning that situation and having believed in your heart and having confessed it, you must act. Because Christianity is a responsibility. It's a responsibility. The, the day you became saved, is that you entered responsibility. The day you became saved, is see, because as a Christian, what pastors do, they are not the ones that actually do the work of the ministry. They train you for the work of the ministry. 
So they are the trainers of the ministers. So you, when you're not, suppo- you, don't, you don't need to have the tag of a minister to be a minister. So the pastors, the apostles, the evangelists, the teachers, and the prophets, they build you up, right? Until you are, you are formed for the work of ministry. Until you mature to be for the work of ministry. That is their duty. So in other words, your responsibility starts the day you became a Christian. The day you became a believer, that is the day your work of faith, your work of responsibility, your work of instruct, working in instruction, daily instruction starts. So faith is responsibility, and responsibility comes by you. You, you, As you grow, as you finish one responsibility, a higher one is given you. In other words, don't think because I obeyed by faith and I got this. The fact that you got your car by this faith, to get that private jet might need a higher instruction to get that one. Hallelujah. So we've talked about it before. How does faith come? By the word, right? Faith cometh by hearing, by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When it says faith cometh by hearing, you're hearing the word of God. But there's a different hearing that you are hearing as the word is coming to you. Like the word, the way you are hearing the word is not the way the other person is hearing the word. There's a specific hearing, even though the word is coming from one place. No matter the scripture says that once has it spoken, twice have I heard. And your faith, you grow in faith by doing, by following instruction, and by praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude 120, building yourselves up in your most holy faith. What he's saying is, your most holy faith is here. So you build yourself up here. You go to this point. The next time you come and you pray in tongues, you build yourself up, up again, then you grow up. Because you are building an edifice, right? Amplified version, it says you are building an edifice. Rise higher and higher like an edifice. Hallelujah. So, You've heard, it, after this, so it's, it's going to be an error. After this series on faith, after hearing so much, so many deep things on faith, on how, even though the faith, you need faith to access what God has done for you, that faith, he still gave it to you. A measure of faith, the faith of Christ. So which means he's still giving you expo. It will be an error that after this, we still struggle to operate in faith. You still go back to your vomit before the five weeks ago that we started this series. Hallelujah. Your growth, your walk in faith, you walk, as you walk in faith, you are growing in grace. Your walk in faith is tantamount to growing in grace. Hallelujah. So one of the ways you grow your faith is by praying in the Holy Ghost. And like we said, one of the things that you should do when you learn something, you practice it immediately. So can we begin praying in the Holy Ghost right now? Can we pray in the Holy Ghost? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Ke mama ma se fele manakan de lega de barando sofron de paradi. Let's be on our feet. Ma se fele managa de barande ke le fida malama gada baraga da bada 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 bash. Jaka te fele manahan de leke li parande le frende parato kosopo yalabaya. Jiga gaga mana nana efele para teke le fila mana gada bagada bada 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 bash efrande parande ele fida mana nana kati pa hande le fele para to jaga da bagada 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 bada 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 bash roko soprone fele mana mania le fele parande ezike le fele bagada baya. Ragada <laughs> Rakolo mo zoporoto le fila manaman negele bagara bara 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 basha. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for every one of you under the sound of my voice tonight. From today, whatever is an obstacle to others shall be a stepping stone to you. 
Whatever is an obstacle to others shall be a stepping stone to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not fear what they fear. You will not fear what they fear. You will not be a victim of what they are victims of. You will not be affected by what affects them. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Their calamity shall not be your calamity. Their calamity shall not be your calamity. Their battle shall not be your battle. Their confrontation shall not be your confrontations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Their failure shall not be your failure. Their failure shall not be your failure. Their failure shall not be your failure. Where, from this day where there is a casting down. You will say there is a lifting up. You will not go down. Financially, you will not go down. Materially, you will not go down. In family wise, you will not go down. Spiritually, you will not go down. Ministerially, you will not go down. In the name of Jesus, no matter who is falling around you, you will keep going higher and higher. No matter who is falling around you, you will keep going higher and higher. You shall keep going higher and higher. You shall keep going higher and higher. From tonight, go and bear fruit. In the name of Jesus. 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 I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. Every arrow of confusion projected into your life by the enemy this season. In the name of Jesus, I command you to check out. In the name of Jesus, I command you to check out. In the name of Jesus, I command you to check out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands to heaven. You can pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Hele manana ne kika kadi efili mana zonda laba raga da mana 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 maaki akande lefe lege dege digada zaba bande lefi kiki kaka kamba lefe le parande le kika kamba laba hande lefe gede bagada ba jike tefe le parande ke lefi da bande lege de bagada ba da ba da ba da ba da ba Rakate fele manani, efele manani, efele manani. Kabali barati, efili bahande lega de gade. Ragada bagada bada bada ba. Regede fege de gadi gada gada ba. Rako koko kika fande bahande le kika kamanana na kati paru sopronde le fida ba. Zakaliban the legegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegegeg
receive it in the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Sister Jews, I saw restoration of stars. I saw 11 stars being restored back to you. Those stars were taken from you by the enemy. But by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I saw those 11 of them. I counted the 1, 2, 3, 11 of them be restored back to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is your season of unusual favor, man. Unimaginable favor. I saw a conversation that is going on behind the scene. All right? And this conversation has to do with you. And it has to do with finance. It has to do with finance. I tell you, ma, this year, you will be tempted to travel on vacation. I tell you the truth. This year, before the end of this year, you are going to be tempted. Like, oh, and I have money. Can I even travel to one country or somewhere just on vacation? All right? Because the Lord said that without a fail, without a fail, that's the word, eh? That his word will come to manifestation in your life this year. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I saw an attack that the enemy want to, you know, project to your life. And this attack has to do, is a life-threatening attack. Alright? I don't know if you, if, you, if you are here with a bottled water. Are you here with a bottled water? Okay, let me use mine. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. There is, is a projected attack on your body. A projected, this is a projected thing. All right? And this fellow is saying that, okay, if I can't get her through physical means or through whatever means, let me bring her down. Anyone who, what I say to one, I say to her, whosoever is not churning it, whosoever is planning it, Whosoever has it in mind to take you out, to take you out, to eliminate you, to kill you for no cause, by the authority in the name of Jesus, they enter that same grave for your sake. The Bible says, he that did get a pit shall fall into it. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare whatever pit dug by the wicked forces against your life and any member of your family, those who dug that pit shall fall into their own pit. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you as instructed by the Holy Ghost. The snare is broken. You are escaped. You are escaped. You are escaped. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the, you are wearing a military uniform in the realm of the spirit. I saw, I saw it now being changed to a military uniform. It's like a military uniform. A military uniform. There is a change of hammer. A change of hammer. And God is saying, I should tell you, man, that you have increased in authority. Increase in spiritual authority. Now, whatever you bind shall be bound. Whatever you lose shall be loosed. All you need to do is just to stand and declare, declare, declare. As soon as you give out declarations, exact thing that you desire to happen in your heart and which your mouth has proclaimed, is the result that you are going to see in the realm of the physical. Yes, that's the exact result. The exact result. God has empowered you as a watcher. A watcher over the entire family. A watcher over the entire household. A watcher over your siblings. 
a water, henceforth nothing, nothing must go wrong. Nothing is permitted to go wrong because you are there and God has empowered you for this cause and for this purpose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is an impartation of the Spirit. Give you all the praise. Jesus. Jesus. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost? Zima namana koso pronde parato yalabaya. Veke leba yalaba. You will not know shame, oh, sister. No shame. You will not know shame. You will not. God says, I should tell you, no more shame. No more shame. No more embarrassment. No more embarrassment. Your heart is combat. All right, with a whole lot of activities. What I mean by activities, so many things that you've been thinking about. So many things that God has said. You are seeing the negatives. Instead of seeing what the manifestation, you are seeing the reverse. But the Lord is saying, I should tell you, ma, that by the unction of the Holy Spirit, eh, beginning from today, all right, he has brought an end to prolong expectations in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I saw a very striking vision in the realm of the spirit. I saw, you know, when we were young, we used to uh, play on, um, uh, what was it called? This, this, um, 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 you know, uh, so those of you, I will give a description so you just remind me that somebody will sit here and someone will sit here and there will be an equilibrium. Lever, yes, liver, right? Liver. So I saw two people sitting, one by the right, the other one by the left, and both of them are female in the spirit. They are women in the spirit. By, uh, why are they sitting on the liver? And they were balanced. And suddenly I saw a fire that came from heaven and it penetrates the middle all right, of where they were seated. And both of them crashed, bam. This other one crashed, bam. And when the thing crashed, it became open. And I saw your image coming out. Coming out. And God said, that which has been locked by the enemy, all right, over your life and destiny has just been unlocked right now. So God has just opened you up. And the forces of hell that have been sitting upon your destiny, yes, has just been judged tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Afterwards, I saw you standing. And I saw different jars in front of you. I started counting them. I, I could count six. And I saw the other one here making it seven. And I saw an angel of the Lord, all right, pouring oil. He started pouring oil on the jars, one after the other. I will fill this one. But when this one is filled, he filled the other one, the third one. He moved on to the fourth one. He moved on to the fifth one. He moved on to the sixth one. And then to the seventh one. And, and then to the seventh one. And God says to tell you, ma'am, that you have entered a season of overflow. Amen. All round overflow. Amen. All round overflow. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The same very places, the same very businesses where you failed are the same very places and very businesses where the Lord is going to surprise you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Kale barato sapaya daba. Ke manaman ne hefi la manosia. Reko soporonde efi la manama. Go ahead. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Just pray in your, is your season of favor. Season of favor. Financial favor. Material favor. Favor, 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 favor. Favor. I see doors being opened. Kale panda le kika katia la managada barandia jakete fila parate efikiti ba leke ke kika mana makonde le fikiti parate jahande le kiki kika kande le fele parate jakoli bande le fele prande parata ta 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 reke ke 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 fikiki kika kabala bakata parando. Jale bande le fi manana na kaki kaka ka rele fe bande le ki barato zefreti barato le fi la manaki kaka ka e jagada bande le gada ba just pray in the Holy Ghost regada bande gada figi di bagada ba yada bagada 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 bash shaka ten le ki kaka kaba ya shaka kaba ya shaka kaba ya shaka kaba ya le ki kaka bande le fe Rakele barakete frege de barata ya da 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 da. Releke ke ki ka kama na 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 zi amana kala ba ya da ba da ba da ba. Reke ki ka ka ba la ba ya ne ki ka koya. Look at me, ma. The enemy made you shed tears, all right, over your husband. God says, I should tell you, they won't make you shed tears over your children. Because I saw there was a battle. All right? This was an internal battle. A family battle. That took place sometime many years ago. Many, many years ago. Even sometime ago. You, uh, uh, the situation is such that it, even till now, you still feel the scars and the effect some of those battles. Because the things that happened led to the entire family losing so many things, including finances, all right, properties, resources. Things were lost on the way. And so as a result of that, even till now, the, the family, the entire household has not been able to come out fully, completely from it. Because each time you remember the incidents, is something that gives you a major concern. And it was during that season that you develop, you know, spiritual stature. That was when you moved closer to the things of God and you started praying, all right? And since then, you, 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 your, it was as though, you know, you build your, your prayer life, prayer altar. Because of that battle, there is no place you did not go to. There was no solution. But it was when you started calling upon the name of the Lord and everyone started calling upon the name of the Lord that then I saw an angel that was assigned. And this angel, all right, had double sword, one by the right, one by the left, and he stood like this. This was the way he was moving. And then suddenly the fire that was ravaging the entire family just suddenly was taken away. Right? Yes, Just overnight, miraculously, supernaturally. Hallelujah. But I see that the enemy, all right, during the course of that battle, made you to shed tears, all right, over the man that you married, that you could call, you call the husband, right? Yes, but I see this, this forces again, all right, trying to come up like fire, trying to come up like fire. But this time around, over your own children. But God is saying, I should tell you, man, that it will not stand. Amen. It will not come to pass. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because I saw a trend in the family where you came from, man. Where, especially even your siblings, eh? they, yes, they shed tears over children. Like yes. children are un unfruitful. They don't bear fruit, required fruit. Yes. Even some of them that seems to be doing well, the moment they just hit certain financial threshold, they forget the family. Yes. They abandon their parents. They abandon their mothers, right? Yes. And this has been a major concern to you, man. Yes, but God is saying, I should tell you, 
that you will not go through that route. Amen. You will go through that route. Amen. You have been delivered from every onslaught of the wicked man. Amen. And you have been delivered from every manipulation of the enemy. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will not bury your son. Amen. Every intention of the enemy against his life. By the authority in the name of Jesus, I command it to be terminated. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Amen. I saw the enemy instigating and stirring up something that looks like a case. That looks like a case. All right? Yes, Before you, I'm seeing it. That's what I'm seeing. Are you getting my point, man? Yes, I, bara, bara. Efeleba handele gede bakatuba. Rekete fila mana 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 mana. You came here sick. You are here right now. You are. You can hear me. Those of you who are watching now, who are, who are hearing me, in case you are sick or you are feeling pain in any part of your body, I decree and declare that you are here right now. I command the healing power of Jesus to rest upon you right now. I command that foul spirit of infirmity to check out of your body now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Can you lift your hands and appreciate Jesus? Lift your hands and appreciate Jesus. Go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him tonight. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Father, will give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Somebody scream glory. Somebody scream glory. Hallelujah. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, I am blessed tonight. Hallelujah. You can take your seat as a king and as a queen in the house. Glory to Jesus. All right, um, at this very point, let's begin to package our offerings. Glory to Jesus. Father, we thank you. Our offering is blessed because we are blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, this is 12 Stone Church. We are a revived people. And um, every Tuesday like this, it's our midweek service where we come, you know, for what exposition, where the Lord um, teach us the word through his servant, through his vessel. Hallelujah. All right, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's, um, it's our word exposition service every Tuesday like this. And Sundays is our prophetic service. We begin from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Every second Friday, it's our night of prayer and prophecy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this um, the month of April, our ninth of prayer and prophecy is on the 12th. The next ninth of prayer and prophecy is on the 12th of April. Hallelujah. Invite your friends. Invite your family members. Invite your loved ones. Invite even your enemy. Because I believe the moment they come here, they will no longer be your enemy. Glory to Jesus. So it begins from 10 p.m. till dawn. Glory to God. So come expectant. Come expectant and don't come alone. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. Yeah. All right, our Pewey Crusade. Pewey Crusade is on the 27th of April, the last week of April. Glory to God. You can also um, follow us on, our, on all platforms, all our social media handles. You can follow us at YouTube at 12 Stone CC. Um, follow us on Facebook at 12 Stone CC. And... Um, of course, Instagram at 12 Stone CC. And um, on Telegram, you can follow us on Telegram at Elisha Oyelade. You can download all our messages. They are available there on Telegram. Glory to God. Go there, download the messages, listing over and over and over again. Hallelujah. And of course, I'm so sure that you're going to grow tremendously. Glory to Jesus. Somebody celebrate Jesus. As our man of God comes to close us, glory to God.
Can we celebrate the Lord Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? Can we be on our feet, everyone? On the 12th of April, we'll be having one of my friends here with us. Night of Prayer and Prophecy. It's going to be prophetic. It's going to be awesome. It will be powerful. And the name of the Lord will be glorified. Praise the Lord. Um, Sunday um, is our prophetic service, which also happened to be Easter Sunday, isn't it? Please, kindly invite your friends. Um, Sunday service, I'll be ministering to the sick. And I'll be ministering in the prophetic by the special grace of God. Do you understand? I will. I'll be ministering to the sick. I'll be ministering um, um, also in the prophetic by the mercies of God. That's this Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. So we teach on the resurrection. Very powerful teaching. And then um, Jesus will be glorified. Praise the Lord. And you will, be, you will testify. Amen. I say you will testify. Amen. I say you are going to testify Amen. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I see God building someone in a house here. Amen. I'm telling you, I see God buying someone a car here. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I see someone receiving, all right, an unexpected, unsolicited for political appointment. Amen. I'm telling you, amazing things, amazing things, amazing things. Amazing things. Amazing things. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And I want to use this medium to sincerely appreciate every one of you who contributed financially and otherwise towards the success of Wumba Healing and Miracle Crusade. It was a success to the glory of God. Souls were won. I think the the pictures and the videos will be ready, all right, very, very shortly. Praise God from the media people so that we can see what Jesus did in Wumba. Praise the Lord. Amazing testimonies, amazing miracles, signs and wonders, instant healings. Praise God. And souls dedicating their lives to Jesus, accepting him as their Lord and personal Savior. And so we are going to take this gospel campaign to um, uh, POA, all right, also. And we believe God that souls will be won massively and destinies and lives will be transformed also. Praise God. Thank you, everyone. Stretch forth your hands. As you go, may the Lord continue to go with you. Amen. You are empowered to succeed. Amen. Nothing dies in your hands. Amen. Nothing dies in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment is condemned. Amen. The hand of the Lord bring you out of difficulties. Amen. The hand of the Lord grant you favor. Amen. By the hand of the Lord, may you experience divine encounters. Amen. By the hand of the Lord, may you be mightily helped. Amen. By the hand of the Lord, may you be highly favored. Amen. By the hand of the Lord, may you be highly sought after. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Difficulties, challenges of life is terminated over your life. Amen. From today, enter your season of rest. Amen. Enter your season of rest. Amen. Enter your season of rest. Amen. In the name of Jesus the battle is over. The battle is over. The battle is over. The battle is over. Go and enjoy your life and enjoy a new season that the Lord has brought you into. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the days of our lives, and we are the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, very sorry for the 
the um, the heat, okay? I think the ACs developed some issues. They've checked it today. By tomorrow morning... Hear this. Whatever you fear was not meant to happen. But you granted it permission to happen. Whatever you fear is not meant to happen. But you granted it permission to happen. Every first daughter in my family always find it difficult to get married. It happens to all your uncles. Now, you are the first daughter. Who told you that the same thing will happen to you? So, because you are the first daughter and you are now 25 or 28 or even 30 <laughs> and all the guys that have been coming around, they are the guys with this kind of trousers. They are putting their jeans here. You know those kind of guys? Hey, yo, man. How are you, Alpha? On serious, they sack their trousers. And they come and you say, I'm a, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. And then, so you are not living. And you know, to make the matter worse, the play, uh, all the places you have been going to, the prayer houses, they've been giving you prophecies in that light. Remember in your family, some people are after you. They are after your marital destiny. Huh? So, oh Lord, how are they that have, what? That trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be who say of my soul. There is no hell for me in God. Oh, and you start quoting Psalm 3. You are quoting the scripture not because you have faith, but in fear. And can I tell you this? God is only pleased by faith. So don't 